war rages across the mortal realms. New alliances are formed while others lie shallow, and the dominant powers ever seek their next conquest. While this and countless other battles rage on, one fact is becoming clear. The season of war has begun. This video is brought to you by the support of our channel members and the FLGS partners, Warfire Minis and X-Planet. Baron of Dice is the exclusive dice supplier for Season of War. Take a look through their incredible designs or even get your own custom dice made. Hello and welcome to Season of War! Tonight we are excited to bring you another game of Age of Sigmar. I'm Jordan, joined by Josh here tonight, our TO extraordinaire, one of the uh, <laughs> great community leaders in the area. I know you're going to be embarrassed when I'm talking about you. So but, embarrassed. But uh, Josh runs some amazing events up here in southern Ontario. Uh, so if you're in the area, definitely check it out. Dwellers Below Wargaming. Yes. Is the, yeah. We just had an event last weekend in yep, RTT. Yep. And then we're going to one together tomorrow. Tomorrow. And I just played a four game RTT and now I'm playing this. So it's great. Yep. Five games today, three games tomorrow. Josh is like doing the Iron Man of I got this. Of Warhammer. So <laughs> eight games in two days. Easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But to jump right into things, we are playing Nexus Collapse today. So we got six objectives on the table. It's hold one, hold two, hold more storing. The twist with it is if you are behind in points, at the start of the battle round, you get to burn two objectives. Seems Very good. impactful. It seems good. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Uh, if we're tied, then we roll off, and whoever wins the roll off gets to burn one. Uh, so that's notable as well. You don't have to, but you have the option to. So very noteworthy, but pretty straightforward mission otherwise. Yep. Josh, you want to jump in and take us through your exciting, exciting. Sons of Bane Atlas? <laughs> very, very different for sure. Um, so, playing Gargants, like Jordan said. Um, it's a bit different. It's not all Gargants. I have the Gits Regiment of Renown as well. Um, so, Brad gets Bottle Snatches. Um, they don't steal mushrooms, they don't steal skulls or money. It's bottles, apparently. Gits are cool like that, I guess. Um, and then also my Breaker Tribe stuff. So, we'll go over that. Um, so, in general, is the Gatebreaker. He has Monsterly Tough for 40 wounds and Amulet of Destiny. Um, they're also in the Boss of the Stomp Battalion, so we get an extra artifact as well as being a one drop. So extra callous feet on the other Gatebreaker, which is fun. So he kicks better. So three attacks, threes, threes, minus three, three damage instead of randomness. Seems pretty good for kicking stuff. Mm -hmm. Then a War Stomper just to stomp hordes and stuff. Yeah. Um, and like George said, the spice is the ball snatches. So they can deep strike or tunnel in wherever they want to, within six. Um, super handy. Unlocks more attacks for me too, like um, things like Surround Destroy are a lot easier. Um, Intimidate are a lot easier. Magical Dominance. So yeah. a bunch of stuff I can do with them, right? So, and then the Rabble Rouser lets my Gargans run and charge if they're nearer to him. So again, pretty good yeah. uh, for what he does. So it's all destruction all the time nowadays. So yeah, should be a good time. Yeah, it gives you lots of bodies and stuff that aren't normally something that sons have, right? So no, I got 20 some odd versus the three or four I normally have, so yeah. <laughs> I can't complain. Yeah. So, but yeah. Nice, well, I'm playing Sylvaneth today. Um, if you're a YouTube member and have watched any of the recent streams about list building or, or event reviews for, since LVO, been playing Sylvaneth a lot and talking a lot about list building with Sylvaneth. Yeah. Um, ran Sylvaneth at your <laughs> tournament you and did. then uh, iterated on the list even from there, so kind of just constantly involving. This isn't the list I'm taking to our RTT tomorrow, but it's very close to it because it didn't have the six Spite Rider Lancers painted. Uh, so I just had to kind of swap things around a bit. Mm -hmm. But some interesting things I am excited to try out today. First off, we're to start off with Belfanos because he is the centerpiece of this army now and so forever. So good. Uh, I am playing in Heartwood, so I get to choose three units to be plus one hit against. There are only three units on the table, so we're gonna automatically know which ones I'm choosing. Perfect. Then I have two other heroes here, two Branch Witches. Uh, shout out to Tyler Emerson for getting me on the Branch Witch train. train yeah. And not only did I de get one, but then I, I took a second one because I'm like, hey, they basically do the same as a Warsaw Revenant for less points. Less points, and yeah. And I get an extra spell choice. So uh, In two spots, not one. So. Yeah, yeah. happy with that. Um, one of them ha does have uh, the Vesperal Gem, and it has Virgil's Harmony, so that lets me auto-cast that spell. And it is the spell to bring back a, a body to my units, or D3 bodies to my smaller like, dryads. Recursion's but, pretty good. Yeah, it helps me bring back Kurnoth or a bug. Uh, and speaking of bugs, I do have, I do have three uh, Revenant Seekers, so they're also going to be able to recur models for me as well. The units that are the ones that want models recurred are my two big units of Kurnoth Hunters. Again, I dropped my Arch Revenant and the 
uh, Revenant Seekers for a unit of six Karoth with uh, Scythes. They're more expensive, uh, but they're both you know, a very solid unit, obviously, oh, yeah. still. I then also have a unit of Sitch Karoth with Swords, giving me both the high rend and you know, the, the high volume, yep. good damage output from both. And then it's just rounded out by two units of 10 Dryads. So good screens and uh, battle line, normal stuff. Battle line's pretty important. Yep, yep. And that's basically everything. Then I do have Spice Swarm Hive because it is the best on the spell in the game. And uh, when you roll I'm, a two up, it's good. Yeah, not dependent on it. It's still a very <laughs> nice bonus when you get it off. Yes. So might as well take it. But Josh, here surprisingly, I actually had both my uh, branch witches in a Andorian Acolytes Battalion. Ooh. So it puts me to three drops. You were two here. Two drops, yeah. Gives me uh, gives me choice. Which I have goblins. They got tricks. But I'm gonna let you go first, sir. Okay, sounds good. So we will jump into Sylvaneth turn one. So round one, my battle tactic is going to be Magical Dominance, which is probably no surprise at all. No, no, you're far enough away. And I will go for just a command point with Belthanos. Sounds good. Which I fail. I'll get a command point with my general because I'm going second. So I have the Locus Focus, whatever yep. it's actually called. And then I'll get a command point with my not General Great Breaker, which is the one without the cowl. I got it, look at that. Oh, I'm going to do this in the right order. Yeah. Uh, Belthanos is going to use Nature Theorem to yep. try and make this wild with Arcane. He does. Give me plus one to cast. And then my first branch witch will cast Spice One Hive. Good. Get that on a nine. You got it. That's the easy part. Hard parts one or two up. Yeah. And then the other uh, branch witch will cast Or Frost. Uh, that's a seven. I'm going to reroll that. That works. For a seven plus one for eight. eight. We're going to put it on the uh, side, or sorry, the sword turn off, and we're going to give them run three. So it's pretty good. Seems pretty good. And then end of the hero phase, Spite Storm Hive. Yes. Is going to give Perfect. Uh, its vital venoms to it doesn't matter because I'm not actually using it here, but I got the spell out for future turns. Yep. I'll just give it to the sword Kurnoth. Sounds good. Pretend I'm gonna do something this turn. Perfect, yeah. Psych me out. I got this. Yep. And then into movement. With the Gargans so far away from any overgrown terrain, the Sylvaneth only cautiously reposition, waiting to see how the battle unfolds before they extend themselves. Having no opportunity to engage their foe, the Sylvaneth complete their battle tactic and score five points. And that's actually gonna be it for my turn here, so. Not very exciting. Uh, my Kurnoth with swords are all buffed up, but they have nowhere to go tonight. And the reason for that, while I got Spites from Hive off, I got Horfrost off. There, again, I was thinking of it like I was getting them all buffed up to Strike and Fade, that kind of thing. But then, as it came to it, I kind of realized, I'm like, oh, well, you're not within nine of any of my Overgrown, so mm -hmm. if I teleport and charge you, even though it could have a nine inch charge, I wouldn't be able to strike and fade away. Okay, yeah. So good positioning in your deployment. I try, they move pretty quick, so I'm not concerned about yeah. crossing the table anywhere, right? So. Yeah. So yeah, I, in hindsight, maybe I should have cast the Mystic Shield instead of the Hoarfrost or the Spite Swarm, but it doesn't hurt to get that up. But yeah, that's gonna be it, Josh. Uh, not too exciting. You'll get you know, potentially the first taste of action on your turn, but. We'll see, and that gives you, uh, you score how many points? I will get, you know, two and more here. So I got my battle tactic of magical dominance. I have two and more. I touched a third objective to make it harder for you to score more. Yeah. Uh, there's a good chance you want to score less because of the mission anyways, but yep. I'm at least touching more objectives. I don't have control over what you score. You could always score less than me. Yes. So, uh, especially having deployed off the objective. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, Interesting. All, yeah, <laughs> yeah. all up to you how you want to play this next turn. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> We're going to Sons of Bamat, turn one. Okay, let's do some fun stuff. So, first, with our general down, they have to come in start of my hero phase. Let's do a command point with my not general gatebreaker just to see what happens as a heroic action. Yes, I get one. And I'll do the same thing with my general. Or leadership, which I get. Perfect. Still start of hero phase. I'm gonna bring these gets down. As Rabble Rousa and the Squig Herd and Hoppers deep strike in the southwest, the Gubapalooza arrives into the more northern corner of the battlefield. Battle tactic. 
Surround Destroy. I can cast spells with Palooza. There's nothing for them to cast, so they'll just hang out. They have their own War Scroll spells and Mystic Shield, Arcane Bolt, but it doesn't matter, so we'll go on to movement. While the Sons of Behemoth keep their distance from the spiteful tree spirits and their pointy blades, the Gargans complete their battle tactic but do not hold more objectives and only score 4 points. I'm not going to go very far. You are far away. You are buffed to the nines with everything else. Yeah. Um, and living and dying by the 4 up save is not something I want to commit to right now. So also a very boring turn, I think, <laughs> for me. Um, but that will score me four Because you're holding two, points. but not more. Correct, yeah. I've, the one the corner took with the goblins, the one here, or the gets, sorry. The one here took with the gatebreaker for two. Not more, but my tactic for just showing up for four points. Nice. I guess we're gonna roll first priority for turn two. Yep, and very... then you get the choice of burning. I will. A five. It's a six. Nice, so you have the choice. I do, you still can't win priorities, it's unfortunate. I've moved closer to your woods, so you can strike and fade, but there's stuff in the way. I will actually take the turn, I think. Okay. For this, and as far as burning, I'm gonna burn this one and that one. Okay, so you burn my two home objectives. Yes. When you don't want to Sons of Bamat, turn two. Okie dokie. Uh, heroic action will just be to get a command point with my general. That said, I will choose my battle tactic, which will be Magical Dominance. I have Wizards and Galapalooza, which are super far away. Yep. So should be okay, but no primals. We'll see how it goes. Nothing fancy here. We're just gonna cast Mystic Shield. Perfect, goes off on a seven. Uh, I think you're a bit past 30. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little out of range. Uh, they'll just put it onto themselves. <laughs> they don't really need it. And I'll just go for heroic leadership with my general. Sounds good. Which I get. As the hoppers look to initiate combat, the dryads redeploy and move five inches further away. I think that's gonna be it for my turn two. Um, so I hold one, I hold two. I hold more now. And my tactic for five. Nice, good turn of scoring for sure. I'll take it. Playing smart right now, playing <laughs> we'll use, see. like, you know, not doing the destruction No, brain. let's break that mold. Just no ABC here, just. Yeah. Uh, Always be careful. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, but it's, uh, I mean, especially with the burning objectives, you put the onus on me to get inside of my territory. So come to me, exactly. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be interesting here. Yeah, I, be something. Yeah, I'm going to have to start uh, making use of Bell Thanos' uh, right in speed charge. ability. Yeah, yep. here. So I guess with that, maybe we'll see some action on my turn. Sounds uh, good. Turn four of the game. <laughs> as we go to the uh, bottom of round two, Silvereth turn two. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go for Surround and Destroy this turn. Okay. That's my battle tactic, and for Heroic Action, I'll just try and generate a command point for Heroic Leadership, which I fail. Uh, I will do Heroic Leadership also on my General Gatebreaker. Do not get it. Thanos will try and make this Train Piece Arcane now, which he does. He does, perfect. My first Branch Switch will then cast a Arcane Bolt, or sorry, a Misted Shield. Sounds good. I'm oh. going to use the Dwindling to reroll that one. That's probably a good idea. Uh, into a 6-7, so I'll get Mystic Shield. Perfect. I'm going to throw it on uh, these turn off up here. The other Branch Witch is going to then cast Horfrost. Yeah, well, here we go. On an 8, hey, so I get that it. off. And I might as well just throw it on the turn off with swords, even if they don't see action. Yep. Because the sides don't need it. No, nope, well, they got good stuff. Okay. So that's going to be a 2. I'm just going to give the swords Ren 2. And then my last cast is going to be a uh, Verdant Blessing to summon a Wildwood. Goes, or we fails on a 4. Not gonna. No plus one from anything? Uh, still fails. I'm oh, for, and then the all important Spites Home Hive. Yep. Which I fail. Cool. Yeah, I knew as soon as they got cool. all my buffs turn one that it was gonna fall apart when I wanted it. Of course, of course. Again, that's the hardest part. Casting it, easy. It's the yep. two up, man. Yep. And then into movement, my curl with sides are then gonna have to spend a command point uh, to auto run six inches. After the Kurnoth hunters rush forwards to engage, the Gatebreaker General redeploys and backs up two inches. The rest of the Sylvaneth force then prepares to charge the squigs or spreads out for their battle tactic.
And now we're just looking for some massive charges. Okay. We'll start off with the curl through sides, looking for a nine. All right, yeah, that, that could redeploy. As an eight, uh, we'll spend the command point to reroll it. Sounds good. Into a 10. ten. There you go. Love it. So as okay. much as I could have hoped for in charging there, <laughs> you, uh, yep. yeah, not bad. And just monstrous actions. Belthanos is going to roar. Sounds good. Your hoppers, which he fails. Of course. Um, the gatebreaker is going to roar the Colonel Hunters. He is. And I'm sure you can guess where I'm starting off combat. I will all defense this. And so there'll be twos and threes because they're a, a hunt target. Okay, perfect. We'll see. I do have 40 wounds and a six up board saves. So we'll see yeah. if I can survive, but. Ah, you'll survive. Well, <sighs> it is going to be nine at yeah. rend three. Nine, so we'll be at sixes. Sixes, no. Uh, how much damage each? A, two, so 18 damage. 18, okay, so we'll, here we go. Six up board save. There are the sixes. Uh, one, Couple. two, three. So take four. Four? 18, so yeah. 14. Yep. That's big because he doesn't bracket yet. The Seekers use all out defense after the Squig Hoppers <laughs> use all out attack, then deal just two damage to Belthanos and three to the bugs. Retaliating, the Seekers then take down five Hoppers with their reprisal. I will go with the Gatebreaker now. So we threes and threes, minus three, four damage, sir. Do you have a missed shield though? Uh, four. One at minus three. Goes through. Four damage. He will kick you. It's going to be twos and threes. Uh, so one at minus two. Fours. Goes through. D3. For one. And then he will use his death grip. Uh, one at minus two. Fours. Save it. You're good. So you cleanly kill a turn off. Look at that. No, the, the gate breaker is cool. Hitting on fours is not the best, obviously. All right. Then Balthanos is last. But definitely not least. Overconfident, Belthanos only takes out three more hoppers, then strikes and fades away, and the hoppers use inspiring presence. All right, and yeah, that's it for the turn. You were playing it smart, you know, staying away from me. I have a lot of damage in my list. You do. Uh, so it's scary to get into. I couldn't maximize my scythes there because I didn't want to tag either of the other. All the giants, yeah. Yeah, guardians. So I only got four dice into combat, uh, but the charge did allow me to take this objective. Big. Mystic shield helped me not take a ton of damage. Actually, it was more your failed hit. My, yeah, yeah. Uh, helped me not take a ton of damage. Dryads and bugs are getting me surrounded and destroy. Yep. And I'm kind of just, yeah, in a holding pattern, uh, thinking about what I want to do next turn. Uh, well, I guess first step is priority though. So I have risked my, my sides. Yep. No way I was going to be able to strike and fade them unless I made like a 12 inch charge over here. Yeah, very long. Um, in hindsight, Knowing you were gonna have the potential two inch redeploy, I could have stayed outside nine or I could have teleported them. I made a nine anyways. Yeah, so really it was a huge charge. Could have so. been the same risk. Um, and you scored five that turn, yeah. right? And I could have potentially even just had a 10 and stayed in cover for extra redundancy, but yep. I did half kill your general. So that's- It's no not too bad, yeah. exactly. Or nearly 14 wounds, but prio. Priority, I got a six. I got a two. Uh, I will take this turn and I can burn stuff. You do get to burn which objectives. Is, which is exciting. We're gonna get rid of this one. And we're gonna get rid of that one. That one. So currently the only two active objectives are these two. The, my two home ones. Yep. So should be good. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, and yeah, we'll go into Sons of Baymat, turn three. I will do lead into the maelstrom, sir. Just to be safe, I will fire out my general. Um, so he, you know, doesn't, hopefully doesn't die yeah. on the, uh, the backswing. And I will just go for a command point. Perfect. Which I get. I'm not concerned about casting stuff, so the Palooza will just... Actually, no, they will cast Mystic Shield. That is a lie. They will cast Mystic Shield. There are two wizards there, but I don't really need one. Uh, seven. I'm okay with a seven. I think you're way too far away anyways. Yep. Uh, so they'll shield themselves. Cool beans. Let's go on to movement. After the Gargan General retreats, the Kurnoth Hunters redeploy, falling back two inches. Let's go into shooting. I have some shooting. So my general ran away. He can't shoot, but the other gatebreaker can throw a rock at you. It's pretty good. It's threes and twos. Minus three, four damage. So on a three. Yes. On a two. Yes. Minus three, four damage. So twos to fives. Yep. It's 
save it. Sure. He just threw a house at you. You're like, no, nah, it's okay. Uh, let's do some charging then. The squigs fail their charge, while the war stomper and gatebreaker each deal three mortals on impact. Squigs failed, which is fine. Let's go to Monsters Rampages. Um, so the War Stomper is going to roar the Crowd Hunters. He is. And then the Gatebreaker is going to stomp them. He is. For one. Let's go into combat. I will start with the War Stomper first. The War Stomper deals 13 damage to the Kurnoth Hunters, who then fight back but only deal six wounds, and are then wiped out by the Gatebreaker. Closing out the fighting, the Revenant Seekers attack and take down the two remaining Squig Hoppers. Karnoths are dead. Lose my tactic when I kill a big damage dealing unit, so that's not terrible. Okay, um, that's my turn. I do hold one and I hold two. Yep. Because I hold more because they're the only two on the table. Yes. Um, but I fail at the Maelstrom because I killed you when I charged. So yeah. only three points. I uh, didn't really want to score low here given the, the turn we're on, but. I'll take it, I suppose. Yeah, so just three points. Yeah. So it'll be 12 10 for you right now. Yep. It's been a bloody one. Obviously, it sucks losing those Kurnoth. I kind of yep. knew it when I was throwing them in, but I also kind of wanted to put myself, fearing you would burn more objectives. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wanted to put myself in the position to capitalize on a double. Yep, no, for sure. It's gonna be spicy. Let's see what we can do going into Sylvaneth. Turn two. Turn three. Sylvaneth, turn <laughs> three. So let's try to have a better turn this time. And I guess for battle tactic, I'm going to go for uh, harness the spear paths. Okay. So I have to teleport and charge or charge and shred and fade. Yeah. Primal dice, we'll each get one. Perfect. And I will get a bonus. I'm going to go for a command point with my general, which I get. I will do heroic recovery on my general. Uh, we'll see, I don't think I've ever got this off. He's bravery seven, which on average I got, cool. Uh, heal D3, heal three, that's good. And then spell casting, and I start off with Horfrost. Yes. Uh, for a four, I'm gonna reroll that with the dwindling. Yep. Into a six, seven. And I can't add my primal because they rerolled it. Yeah, so even then, you had a one in the initial roll, so it's yep. still dicey, right? Yep. You don't want to risk that. Yep. Not good, not the start I wanted. We'll try and cast a Mystic Shield. Yep. Which we'll get. And the last spell is going to be uh, Verdant Blessing to summon the Wildwood. On a seven, seven goes you've got it. And the most important roll of them all, the Spice Roll High. Uh, yeah. Not as important this turn, but I do get it off, and we're gonna throw that buff on the turn off. And then into movement. In the movement phase, Beltanos uses at the double to rush across the battlefield. Then the Gatebreaker General redeploys three inches away. Don't forget you can get access to four extra battle reports every month by supporting the channel through our YouTube membership. Hit the join button below the video to learn more. Oh, it's looking dicey, but we're gonna start some charging with the turn off. Do it up. You need a six. We got a seven plus three for 10. Yeah, I'm gonna unleash hell with the gate breaker. It's a moment. Bomb return anyways, I have CP to spare. So, Unleash Hell makes me minus one, but you have command models, so you get plus one. So back down to threes. No, not happening. Good start. Yep, yeah, yeah, here you go. And then, just monstrous actions. Balthanus yep. is gonna roar your gatebreaker. Do it up. Cocked. No. No roar. I will try to roar Balthanus also. No, both of us are not scary. Yeah. And I actually will start off combat with Balthanos. Uh, I'll all defense against this. My last command point. Twos and threes. Yeah. So far so good. Um, four at rent three. Four at rent three brings me to sixes. Uh, okay. Not bad. I will. Three sixes three is sixes. all right. Uh, three damage, right? Three damage, yep. Okay. And then the mount will be threes and threes. Okay. Okay. Less good. Ooh, okay. Uh, dice game. Perfect dice game. That's it. <laughs> uh, let's fight with said gatebreaker. He'll go into the, into the swords. Into the swords. And I will all defense them. Yep. So threes and threes, minus three, four damage. Three at minus three. So I'll be plus two, so ones to fours. Yep. Two go through. Uh, eight damage so far. Uh, he will kick you. One at minus two. Back to my three up. Good. And then death grip. Wounds, minus two. 
Goes through. D6 for one. Oh, thank gosh. Always one. Means I, he only kills one, <laughs> which is big. Yes, that's a, a big deal. This turn has not been going how I hoped. We're going to just get everyone into combat. Twos and threes here. Sounds good. Uh, a bunch of sixes. Oh, that's a lot of mortal wounds. 14 mortal wounds. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, that makes up for Belthanos, yep. And nine at rend one. Nine at rend one, okay. Uh, I fail two. How much damage each? Uh, two, so that'll be... Four. Yeah, so 18 damage total. Total, he took three, so he's taking 21. And then we're gonna strike and fade. I'm gonna see if I can take this objective, but I don't think I can. And that's it for my turn. Um, yeah. Not what I was hoping for. I, from from the hero phase onwards, it just wasn't really going great. I mean, not horrible, but uh, Horfrost is the big one. Not getting that off. Yeah. You made seven out of <sighs> seven out of nine <laughs> four, up, four up saves. Yeah, and then the other ones there were three yeah. sixes and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Belthanos. With Belthanos could have easily been nine more damage from Belthanos. Yep. Um, and whatever, who knows, maybe another sitch from the turn off. 15 more damage would, would <laughs> pretty, be great. pretty much on the table. Yep. Uh, would have been, yeah, would have been very good, but still not the worst. We got some damage out there. Yep. I do take one of the objectives, but yep. I was hoping to kill this guy and have the room then to strike and fade and put all six turn off on there. You killed one, not a surprise. Uh, you're super high rend. So it is what it is. With the mission, you know, having let you stay behind yeah. last turn as well. You've made it really tight, but I'm just trying to store the most I can now to make it hard for you to come back. To come back, exactly. So, um, so I'll get hold one, and my battle tactic for three points putting me up. Uh, it's always by only 13, one. 13, 12. Yeah. Yep. So, so not a big lead by any means. I would have loved again to take this one be up three points yeah that would have been annoying to come back from uh priority yeah it's looking sketchy here that's a four that's, that's a, a five, five. we needed go. that one though yeah uh, so we're gonna go into silvernath turn four so my battle tactic this turn is going to be eradicate trespassers okay uh, so i gotta take down that guardian because he's uh, near my tree and then my battle tactic will just be heroic leadership Here. with my general heroic action, yep. which I fail, so heroic action. Yep. Um, I will heroic recovery on my general, try and get him healed a little, little bit more. Roll seven, which is what his leadership is. His bravery, sorry, heals two. And then primal dice. Yes. We'll each get one. Perfect. And I will not get a bonus. Okay. My first branch witch will uh, cast Horfrost. Okay. I will reroll that. Yeah. With the dwindling. Into a six, seven, not, not enough. Oh, twice now. Yeah. And twice you rolled one in the initial roll as well. I think it's meant to be. And then my other branch witch will use the best roll gem to okay. auto cast Virgil's Harmony and bring back a Karoth Hunter. And then it's movement though. Let's do it. As the Sylvaneth prepare for another wave of attacks, the War Stomper redeploys onto the objective. And that's it for movement, so just some charges. We'll start yep. off with the swords. Monstrous actions, Belthanus is gonna roar again. Yep. We get it this time. Sounds good. Um, I'm going to... Roar the Kurnoth with the Gatebreaker. Yes, I am. Uh, so I'll be twos and threes. There you go. Four mortals this time. Four. That's where these guys are, are swingy. Four, yeah, 25. 13, I run one. Goodness, okay. Fives. No, oh, goodness, don't. No. That'll do it. We're gonna roll off a timber, see right. where he falls. That's a Four. one. Four. Yeah, backwards. Does. Perfect, he can't hurt my own guys, but. He definitely had a bad time. After taking down the Gatebreaker, the Kurnoth strike and fade, claiming the other remaining objective. After striking and fading, that's it for <laughs> combat. Obviously, had a lot in line there, but I don't want to hit first anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. basically the story. Um, that's why I've been running a lot of the Spite Rider Lancers. Yep. Um, giving you two activations first, but it's handy. Here, also with how compact your group together, it's what Guardians want to do. They want to yep. be able to retaliate and. 
uh, made it tough, but striking fade helped me get around that. I was also able to just barely squeeze enough Kurnoth on this objective. To steal it from me. To have 22 models on there to take it. <laughs> uh, I'll take, have control of this one still as yeah. well. So that's going to be a total of uh, five Sorry. points for me. So, that, so I will get my battle tactic and yeah, two and more for five points. Putting me up six, trying to build the lead now. <laughs> Here we go, we'll uh, Josh, see. Josh, yeah, it'll be a big turn for the Sons of Bamat. Yep. And we'll go into their turn four. Sounds good, okay. So I'll do Wrecking Crew as my battle tactic. So I have to knock down a piece of faction terrain. Uh, thankfully, Jordan put a nice tree right here for me. Yep. Uh, so on a three up, I get a tactic. Uh, on a one or two, I don't. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Croak action. I will do heroic recovery on my general yet again. Uh, nope, he is not that brave. And then Belthanos will do his finest hour. Uh, I'm not concerned with casting spells with Palooza at all. Um, so we'll leave them. Uh, what they will do, they will run in movement phase, which we'll go to right now. After the War Stomper repositions, the Branch Witch General redeploys three inches. Uh, that's my movement. Um, let's go to shooting. So I do have some shooting. Uh, I'm going to throw a rock at the Seekers. So it's gonna be threes and twos. No, okay, not today. Okay, that was lackluster. Let's go to the big thing the Giants have to do, which is charging. Charging in, the War Stomper deals four mortal wounds on impact, while the Gatebreaker fails to deal any. Uh, yeah, let's go on to Monstrous Rampages. Do you get a battle tactic? Let's find out. On a three up, I will knock down your tree, sir. That's a four. It. That tree is knocked down and gives me two points. And then we're gonna roar the uh, Seekers. We are. Let's go with the Gatebreaker first, I think, into the Seekers. So it's threes and threes, minus three, four damage. Uh, you're roared, so you're just gonna take this. If I could hit, so that's actually, oh, that was really, really good. <laughs> um, threes. Uh, so four at minus three. Uh, goes through. 16 damage, that kills them. Rude. The War Stomper then uses all out defense when the Dryads attack, and they only deal one damage to the Gargant. The other Dryads also use all out defense when the Squig Herd attacks, and they suffer three wounds then deal seven damage back to the herd with their retaliation. Lastly, the War Stomper attacks and takes out the remaining Dryads. Uh, so, kill some Dryads, kill some bugs. I lost three squigs, which means the only bravery three, so I still lose D6 squigs, which isn't terrible for me because I can yep. do some mortal wounds with it. Three, uh, then on three ups, they'll do mortal wounds. Uh, three mortal wounds to the Dryads. Okay. And then the Dryads will use Inspiring Presence to stick around. On that said, I hold one. I hold two. Hold more. I broke your tree for five, sir. Yeah, so again, only up one point. Yeah. And I'm in a nervous spot. I think this is round five. I we'll see how this goes. Winning ties is all I can hope for right now. Let's go. That's a six. Oh, I need a six here. Here we go. Let's pray. Not today. Not today. Uh, I'm going to take this. Okay. Well, yes, we'll be going into Sons of Baymat, turn five. It's big. I'll do Intimidate the Invaders for my battle tactic. Uh, I have a few ways I can accomplish it, so let's hope. Let's do Finest Hour on my general. Okay, and I will similarly do Finest Hour on my general. Woohoo, here we go. Uh, so. Casting spells, <laughs> doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and go to movement, sir. The Gatebreaker is actually not going to move. He's fine where he is. I have Sweet. charge lanes everywhere. It's gonna fail it. <laughs> yeah, shh, don't do that. I have shooting first, sir. I have shooting. Uh, so I'm actually gonna throw a rock. So we fours and twos, minus three, four damage by throwing a rock into your branch which that does not hit you. Okay, fine. We're going to play this game a little too honest, I guess. Let's go ahead and go to the charge phase. Okay. The War Stomper charges first and deals eight mortal wounds on impact. Then the Gatebreaker uses forward to victory and deals three mortals to the Branch Witch General. Okay, let's do things. The Gatebreaker will roar the Chronoth Hunters. 
He will not. So the war stomper. Yeah. The gatebreaker will stomp your general. Uh, yes. For two. Dead. Get out of here. Belthanos will then roar the gatebreaker, which he fails. Okay. Preparing for combat, the Kurnoth use all-out defense as the War Stomper attacks, and the Gargant deals 10 damage to the Kurnoth. Next, Belthanos uses all-out attack and deals 10 damage to the Gatebreaker, then the Squig Hoppers and Dryads slap around at each other, not doing much of anything. Nearing the end of the battle, the Gatebreaker attacks and deals 7 wounds to Belthanos. Then the Kurnoth Hunters deal a total of 10 damage to the War Stomper. Then at the end of combat, I just have the tramples with my turn off. Three. Yes. Two more mortal wounds. Two more mortals. Hey, Sun's turn five. I'm going to score. Hold one. Hold two. Yep. Hold more. Uh, I got my intimidate tactic with a bunch of stuff outside of my territory. For five. Yep. Uh, that's big. You're up four points right now. Finally up this, turn, this yeah, game. Yeah, looking uh, bad here, looking grim, but we're going to jump into a quick silver death turn five. My battle tactic is also going to be uh, intimidate the invaders. Makes sense. Yep, my guys will be very scared of you. Yeah. Uh, my hero action is just going to be to generate a command point with Thanos. Sounds good. Got it. I will get a command point with my general as well. I will not. And then into casting, we're going to auto cast Virgis Harmony. Yep. Um, Sad my Kurnoth ran. Would have loved to have four. We're going to auto summon a Kurnoth back. Yep. And then with the second cast, we're going to cast Unleashed Spites. Okay. On a nine, Hold which is six. going to deal three mortal wounds hey. to your Gatebreaker, or your War, War Stomper. War perfect. Into movement, Balthanus is going to spend his last and only command point that we have to retreat and charge. Sounds good. We. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, he made it. And he's going to charge. Yeah. Uh, so he'll make it in. We will roar the War Stomper. War Stomper. I get it. You will, uh, I will, I will roar you back, sir. I will not roar you back. Okay. And I don't know what the right answer is here, but we're to start off with a turn off. <laughs> Sounds good. Six mortals. Six mortals. Okay. And six at rend one. 29, G. okay. Three, six. This could, uh, this could do it. This could kill him. Yeah, you just got him. To the wound. Oh, okay. This is big though, let's roll off for uh, my timber. That's a three. Ah, he will fall Away. nowhere relevant. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, that was that's good. That, that's important. Yeah, so here, bottom of turn five, just was going for the maximum points I could. Yeah. I'll get my battle touch of intimidate, hold one uh, to score three points. Yep. It means sadly I'm <laughs> down two at the end of the end of the turn. Yep. Then you're also gonna get the grand strategy to be up five points. Yeah, my grand strategy denied your grand strategy, which yeah. is a thing. Yes, yeah, so. You're up five points here. Obviously, the Grand Strat kind of didn't need to throw him that far forwards. Yeah. In, in hindsight, could have left him here, back here, just to be safer. And the, I mean, wouldn't have changed the outcome of the game. Yeah. Would have got me three more points. But, well, I think the big thing too is, like, typically for Gargants, playing more than three or four objectives is big. Yeah. But with this one, I can make it, you know, two. And both my home, I count for a bunch of models, right? So. Yeah. Making you come to me after I played super reserved. Yeah, works. It, it was very well played, uh, very smartly played too. I think my mistakes to, to look back at the game were the scythes. Did I need to risk them, throw them in there? Yeah. Like I got, you know, 14 damage out of them and lost them. Yeah. yeah. Really not good. You know, whereas I could have parked them in the tree, fished for a bigger charge where I could have still struck and fade. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I got a 10 inch charge, so it probably would have been enough. Yep. But maybe I think this mission, having thought about it with my army mm -hmm. about this mission, I felt comfortable on it even if my opponent was burning objectives, I have the speed and aggression to push. You can be wherever you want, right? With all the teleports and everything, yeah. so. But in this matchup, it's tougher because normally I, I'm killing stuff and removing it from objectives, but it was tough yeah. for me to hold more in the later turns. Yes, for sure. Or hold the, the objectives in the later turns. Well, I count so many models too, right? Yeah. At, at one point, I had my two giants count as more than your entire army, right? Exactly. So, so even trying to like, there's no chance for me to deny any points, yeah. which was big. And you have to go chance. for go for the kill, right? Which yeah. doesn't always work. Like I just roll super hot, which I did, and sometimes Belthanos just doesn't want to put the yeah. work in, right? So yeah. So I think 
Um, now, that, that play with the, the first unit card off, yeah, that wasn't ideal. I, I'm, it's unfortunate I didn't really get the combo of abilities and whatnot with like yeah. the buffs onto the swords ever, besides turn one when I couldn't get them in anymore. They were hanging out, yeah. yeah I, maybe I just, like, again, I don't think the answer is to throw them away ever. So, yeah, that wasn't great. You won the pile there anyway, so it's not like I would have doubled, yeah. uh, as we saw with the sides going down. Uh, and then the other thing that I, I kind of feel like, in hindsight, should have played different, again, felt like this mission was fine, even if I'm losing, you're burning objectives, yeah. but it, again, in hindsight, with how good you control objectives, mm -hmm. I feel like that turn two, uh, I yeah. bottom of turn two, I should have dropped a point to tie, to tie at least, if not two points to force us, like to keep them all and force us to play on a bigger yeah, map. Yeah, because I don't want to do that with, with my yeah. my four big boys, right? Yeah. I want to stay central as possible, so. Exactly, so you very well played, Josh. Super, <laughs> super, uh, super impressed. That was very smartly done. Yeah, like we saw the, you know, you, you huddle your gardens together and it's tough to crack into them. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, you got less attacks in two with everything, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Um, love seeing the rabble rouser the, or the sub faction, not the sub faction, but the regiment yeah. of renown. He, hey, he won me the game by dancing oh, around. It's notable, Josh, you were talking about the grand strategy throughout yep. the game where it's not tied to Sons of Bayamat units. Just so anything, yep. Anything can, has to run or charge. They make that very reliable. They give you objective scoring units, throw exactly. away units, screens. Well, it's like I score things I wouldn't normally score, like Surround Destroy would never score with four Mega Gargants, right? Yeah. I got turn one. Um, Magical Dominance, same thing, right? So yeah, it's super handy for you lose a Gargant, but you get more utility with it, right? Yeah. So. And yeah, it was really cool to see the play style. Like, again, super conservative. You would, Like you said, those opened up battle tactics for you that otherwise yeah. you would have to play a little more aggressive. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, that was very interesting. But yeah, very impressive game from the Sons of Bayamat. Yep. So yeah, congrats on the big win. <laughs> Thank you. Taking, uh, not taking down, but taking it to Bell Thanos and, and his friends. But guys, that's gonna be it for us here tonight. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that battle report. Don't forget, if you want more content, you can check out our YouTube membership by hitting the join button below this video. You get four extra battle reports every month and goes a long way in supporting the channel. But either way, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon in another battle report.